Hi friends, this is Krish Dhyaban Naksal. Friends, I am often asked, what is the difference between buying a plot of land on which the builder will construct a flat or just buying a plot of land and constructing a flat yourself? What is the difficulty? How about if you buy a plot of agricultural land? How about if you buy a plot of land somewhere in the wilderness near your uh, city? You go to the outskirts of the city, find a, a plot and buy a plot of land and uh, you know, do the process or alternatively. Builders are doing it for you, they say. Why not just buy a plot of land in a scheme promoted by a builder somewhere outside the city? It's usually outside the city. And then participate in that scheme and the project and then they will make this uh, bungalow or tenement, you know, two-story, three-story structure. Plots are offered by builders at various sizes, uh, 1500 square feet, 3000 square feet, etc. And then they construct on that. What is the harm? What is the problem? Isn't it a safe way to get your dream house? These are some of the questions I am asked. Some of these schemes are near Mumbai, but a great many of these, these types of schemes, where you buy the land and then the, the house will get constructed. Many of these schemes are in Bangalore area. Okay? On the outskirts of Bangalore, more particularly in a place called Whitefield. This is where I receive most of the calls from. What is wrong? What are the dangers? Let me tell you what can go wrong. And I am basing this on a few cases that came to me from Bangalore side and a few cases where I personally investigated without any problem arising. But I just investigated it as a flat buyer and these are, these are a few things that I learned. First of all, let me talk about Bangalore in particular. Anybody who believes that South Indians, especially Kannadigas, I am a Kannadiga, okay, I am a Kannada guy. If people believe that Kannada guys are very clean and their dealings are very good and all that, a lot of North Indians have this idea that North Indians are cheats. South Indians, especially Kannada people, very clean sir, very nice, very nice people. Forget about it. Forget about it, please. Take that idea out of your brain. Kannadigas. Especially those who do business and more particularly builders can be some of the most corrupt people and the most crooked people and their crookedness and corruption comes with a lot of method and cleverness. There is a different flavor to their cleverness and their cunningness. Please do not mistake Kannadigas to be all clean and clear. You have to be very 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 careful when you are dealing when you are dealing with real estate especially please be careful with this proviso let me begin first let me tell you what is the kind of projects that are offered to you so one scheme that is offered to you can be in outskirts of Mumbai or Pune or outskirts of a city like Nashik or outskirts of Bangalore one scheme that is offered to you is the builder has identified a land which is not yet made non-agricultural. He hasn't gotten non-agricultural permission. Any permissions are not there. But he says, listen, we will buy the agricultural land. You buy the plots in the agricultural land. I have done the plotting. And then we will get them converted to non-agricultural. This is uh, one type of thing and they say we will all form a cooperative society or the builder will say don't worry you leave it all to me but you guys form the cooperative society what can go wrong let me explain first of all you may not necessarily get the non agric na permissions or the builder may start coming back to you a few years later and say you know what for na permission we have to give so much bribe. We will have to give 
5 lakhs of or 5 crores of bribe and for 5 crores i need to collect money from all of you guys so he will start doing that and collecting more and more money from you and you will never know whether his story about the bribe is true or not builders or they are they are not necessarily builders they are just cheats they are just crooks they do these things so the one scam that you can get stuck with is the na not getting converted or rather you know agricultural land not getting converted to non agricultural land that is one type of problem now let me tell you another type of problem you your builder says i have already got non agricultural land permission i have done the i have done the na work okay now we can start building on it and i have done the plotting and the deal is that you will buy the land and i mean you will buy a plot okay you can come and choose your plot whether you want a corner plot or whether you want a plot that is close to the central part with where you may have a common area common plot you know different or whether you want a corner of the whole thing where he will say oh this is going to be very close to the farms the fields or overlooking a valley or you know this kind of attractions are there so he will offer you all these things he says come and choose he will have done plotting okay and you will go and choose a plot and he will say okay this plot is allotted to you now come and give the token and you will take a token often the the plot may not be clearly delineated in any way okay all he says is he will name his plot the big plot it has not been subdivided into small plots remember the big plots so let us say it is uh, survey number so and so whatever the however they are putting it survey number such and such and there is this plot it may be an odd shape plot or it may be a proper shape plot now given that plot he will say okay i am allocating this corner thing which i call plot number 10 so plot number 10 in my project which is called let us say ardhan hills what you may not realize is ardhan hills the plot may not have any development potential at all that entire project may not even have the involvement of an architect often two or three enterprising chaps get together buy a plot or tie up the local you know the guys who own the land with an mou take the land chalo they make it non agricultural then they will do the plotting themselves with chalk or putting stones or whatever they will do all that you get the impression that there is some kind of a system there is no system you get the feeling that you will automatically assume that it you it must be permitted to build Uh, let us say on a 1500 square feet plot you will be allowed to build maybe 1000 square feet or 1500 square feet on that plot so leaving us uh, this thing a two story structure you will have that impression he will give you the idea verbally what you may not realize is you are not allowed to develop on that plot why whatever regulations the building permissions will never come why maybe there is an airport planned nearby a helipad or an airport or something a metro station or there are high tension wires passing through that area you will not realize that you will not understand what are the limitations of the land you don't know anything about the land they will sell it to you they will collect the money they will discover the problems only later or they will leave it for you to discover so one thing is they collect the money it's easy money it's easy money because they haven't done anything they have just taken a land they have plotted it they sold you a, a corner or a middle or a whatever and you will not even be able to go to court because even your agreement may not properly specify which part of the land that is or it may have some tricky wordings like undivided share and divided share now let me explain what is the meaning of undivided share and what is the meaning of divided share because a lot of people get fooled by this undivided share divided share business 
when a builder sells you a plot of land you will assume that you own that land you should assume it it's correct so he says this plot of land sir uh, 3000 square feet of land i am selling to you at 50 lakh rupees now let me tell you this if that land which is in the middle of nowhere has not been developed nothing is going on there no drainage no sewage has been laid no drinking water pipelines have been laid no electricity cables no infrastructure and that builder is charging you 10 lakhs 20 lakhs 50 lakhs most likely for 3000 5000 square feet it is hugely overpriced hugely overpriced you may end up paying 5000 square feet you i mean sorry uh, you may end up paying 50 lakh rupees you may end up paying 1 crore rupees because you are thinking in your mind that you are going to build this huge beautiful palatial bungalow there you have this idea of bungalow dream house in your mind you know the place where you're going to retire and live like a king don't have that idea that's a wrong idea that's a bad idea it's a it's the idea that makes you give large amounts of money for worthless land absolutely worthless land moreover that land is may not be actually sold to you or transferred to you because what they will say is sir they will not say this they will not say this you will realize it later they have plotted the land with stones and with chalk and what not white marker and all that kind of thing however that land does not have an individual identity because they have not subdivided the land so they cannot sell you that land if the thing doesn't have an identity it can't be sold to you and if it cannot be sold to you then what they are going to say somewhere in the agreement it may be there written in a tricky way is they will give you divide undivided share now what is undivided share it means after the whole society gets made then the cooperative society will be given the conveyance of the whole land and of course you have a share in that because you own a you own a plot not a house yet it's only a plot in that place so you are a shareholder of the society which owns the entire plot are you the owner of the plot no you are not the owner of the plot what is the implication of this do you have to be the owner of the plot how about just being the owner being a shareholder of a society which owns the plot i will explain what's the problem the problem is one the builder is going to hold you to ransom what these guys do now here's how the schemes usually work they are going to say you will have to give building a contract to the builder so your house is going to be built by this builder alone or sometimes they will say you can bring any builder you like but he will have to take approvals from us from that builder okay if he has to take approvals from that builder then that builder will never give approvals to another builder or another contractor he will make his life difficult he will be nitpicking this is the problem that is the problem don't do this do this don't do that do that he will create hell so you will eventually say forget it i don't want to give it to another guy let me give it to this builder only so this is one thing it is a monopoly he sells you the land he doesn't really sell you the land he creates an impression that he sells you the land it may not even have adequate building permissions it may not even have adequate development potential by development potential what it what i mean is the local planning authority whoever that is whether it is the local village panchayat or whether it is a municipality or whether it is a body like mmrda you know mumbai metropolitan region development authority and pune has a pmrda for pune metropolitan region so there may be a local 
Bangalore has a BMRDA. I think BMRDA is a sort of a fraud body. This is the impression I have formed. I would like to get feedback from people, but I think BMRDA, Bangalore thing is hugely fraudulent and I can explain why I think it's fraudulent. It is fraudulent on a number of counts and property is being sold as permitted by BMRDA Bangalore uh, Municipal uh, this thing, uh, Metropolitan uh, Region Development Authority. It's a scam. It's a huge scam. It's a massive scam. And the government is in on it. The municipal corporation may be in on it. Lot of people are in on it. Now, let me come back to the uh, how it works. So the builder says, we are going to build this much. How much? He will give you a plan. He will say, see this is a 3000 square feet plot. On this we will make a bungalow which has a footprint of let us say 1500 square feet. Okay. Now ground floor we will do this and there is going to be a kind of a place where you can put your car and it will be under an awning and upstairs it's going to be a slightly bigger area. So another 1500 square feet or 2000 square feet we will build above and then there is a terrace. Now this is how they show you. They will show you a design and you will think in your head Hey, 2000, 3000 square feet. How nice. I am going to be living in a bungalow. You know, you will visualize yourself driving out of there, there and all that. What he may not tell you is there is a water shortage in the area. Water connections will not be municipal water connections. Will be tanker water. You will have to depend on tanker water. He may not tell you this. Or in addition to this, there may be more issues. For example, sewage connection. Now for having a sewage connection, the builder has to connect the drainage lines from that plot to a municipal drainage line. And for that there has to be a gradient. It has to go downhill. It has to go down a slope. Sewage has to flow down a certain slope. I think the, if I remember correctly, it is something like for every 1 meter, every 3 feet roughly of horizontal distance of a sewage line, there has to be, I think it is a 1 foot drop uh, vertically, like this. Okay. So, there has to be that slope, that gradient. Why? Because all the sewage sludge has to flow with sufficient force, otherwise there will be a build up of sludge. And if sludge builds up, then your sewage system will not work, it will get clogged. It will need to be cleaned out very regularly, very often. It can turn into a huge nuisance, huge burden. And you may not even get occupation certificate from the local planning authority. Because they will say this drainage system is not adequate. It is unhygienic. What It will overflow and it will flood the whole place with smelling, stinking sewage. So this is a problem. He will not disclose the problem. He may know it. They may know these things. They will not disclose it to you. After you have bought the plot, then one by one these different problems will start coming out. So this is a great big danger. And one more thing is, they get the plotting part of it approved by RERA. They don't get the building part of it approved by RERA. The pro because they are going to say we are contractors, we are individual contractors. The plot has already been sold to you, you are the owner. So they don't have to get the building part of it approved by RERA. Now what is the significance? The significance is there is no accountability. You can be exploited, suppose they, you will enter into a dispute. It will not be a dispute about the land, your dispute will be about the structure. Rera will not touch you. Rera will say, boss, here you and the builder, you have an independent um, this thing agreement. We have nothing to do in this. This is not registered under Rera. Only the plotting was registered under Rera. If you say we, you have inadequate drinking water facilities, so there is no running water, there is no bore well, there is no uh, you know uh, sewage, drainage is inadequate. Electricity connection has not come, 
they will say sorry boss not our problem go wherever you want go to court go to high court this is what can happen one more issue when they enter into agreement with you watch what is written in your agreement what i have seen in bangalore side agreements is this you are not only entering into agreement with the builder let us call his name as premier limited so you are not only entering into agreement with premier limited premier limited will make you enter into another agreement in the same this thing for the land with uh kempe gauda anna gauda tangi gauda bappi gauda tatti gauda you will have number of names you will have 20 names baby chunni baby chikki all these names 9 year olds and 10 year olds why oh sir they are all owner they are all inheritors of ancestral property so you are entering into full uh, you know an agreement with so let us say 15 people and you are entering into agreement with this builder what is the harm you will ask what is the problem i'll tell you what is the problem any one of these people baby kutti can go to court and say i have entered into agreement with this guy let us say your name is flat buyer and he is supposed to pay me something more now that matter will go to court and it will linger there for 20 years baby kutti is free to litigate against you let us say you sorted it out with baby kutti then mummy kutti and papa kutti will get interested they will come so it is like being surrounded by a number of i am sorry to say this beggars okay you give money to one beggar you are finished because all the beggars are going to come this is one problem and there can be other problems another problem is you enter let us say there was a guy named uh, kempe gauda and kempe gauda had one wife let us call her pushpa and you have entered into agreement with kempe gauda's and pushpa's children let us say she has 10 children and grandchildren and all that and you entered into agreement with all these guys what you don't realize is you can still be litigated why because he had another wife named rashmi and rashmi has another 10 children and they are not named in your agreement so they are going to come and litigate against you builder will say what can we do sir what to do sir kindly adjust now builder is going to brush off you already paid your money you can go to hell builder will take your money this happens so this kind of scammy things are there please be careful i will ex- ex- explain more about these things i am your friend krishdeep arban naksal jai maharashtra jai hind jai jawan jai kisan